So before we sit to talk with Rabbi Alyssa, let's take a moment to discuss the history between Israel and Palestine. So in the late 19th century, a movement began that would reshape the Middle East and spark one of the longest running conflicts in modern history. This was the birth of Zionism. Zionism advocates for the reestablishment and support of a Jewish homeland in the territory defined as the historical land of Israel, roughly corresponding to Canaan, the Holy Land, or the region of Palestine. The movement emerged in response to the widespread anti-Semitism Jews faced in Europe and elsewhere. Zionism has various branches, ranging from cultural Zionism that emphasizes the cultural revival of the Jewish community in its ancestral homeland, to more political and religious forms that stress establishing and maintaining political sovereignty in the region. Over time, as the movement evolved, Zionism led to the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, following the approval of the UN Partition Plan, which aimed to establish separate Jewish and Arab states in the territory of the British Mandate of Palestine. Meanwhile, Palestine, a region under Ottoman rule, was predominantly inhabited by Arab Muslims and Christians. As Zionists began migrating in greater numbers, tensions grew. The land these new settlers eyed for a homeland was already home to a people with deep roots and a history that spanned centuries. By the mid 20th century, following the horrors of World War II and the Holocaust, international sympathy for the Jewish plight was high. In 1947, the United Nations proposed a plan to partition Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states, accepted by Jewish leaders but rejected by Arab leaders and the surrounding Arab states. The stage was set for turmoil. May 14, 1948 marked a pivotal moment. Israel declared independence. This declaration triggered the first Arab-Israeli war. Neighboring Arab countries invaded, aiming to thwart the budding Jewish state, leading to massive displacement known to Palestinians as the Nakba, or catastrophe. Fast forward to 1967. During the Six-Day War, Israel captured the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem. These territories, especially Jerusalem, remain at the heart of the dispute, with both Israelis and Palestinians claiming rights to the city. The late 20th century saw efforts at peace, most notably the Oslo Accords of the 1990s, which recognized mutual legitimacy but fell short of achieving a lasting resolution. The peace process has largely stagnated since, with sporadic violence and periodic escalations casting long shadows over hopes for a resolution. As we trace the contours of the Israel and Palestine conflict from its historical roots to the present day, it's crucial to address the recent surge in violence that has intensified the long-standing tensions. On October 7th, a significant escalation occurred, triggered by attacks launched by Hamas, the governing authority in Gaza, which sent a wave of rocket fire into Israeli territory and the capturing of approximately 125 hostages. This was met with immediate and substantial military retaliation by Israel. Now, before we delve further, let's understand more about one of the key players in this conflict, Hamas. Founded in 1987 during the First Intifada, Hamas is a Palestinian Islamist political organization and militant group. It emerged from the Gaza branch of the Muslim Brotherhood, quickly moving into a political arena with a strong resistance identity against Israeli rule. While designated as a terrorist organization by several countries, Hamas also plays a significant political leadership role and provides social services in Gaza, portraying itself as a legitimate resistance movement to many. The repercussions of this recent outbreak are profound. Reports indicate that thousands of lives have been lost, with thousands more people suffering injuries. The infrastructure damage in Gaza and surrounding areas has been extensive, intensifying an already dire humanitarian situation. Families have been displaced, and the cycle of fear and uncertainty continues to spiral. The term genocide is controversially used by some activists and groups to describe the situation in Gaza, pointing to the high number of Palestinian casualties, particularly in light of military engagements and the ongoing blockade which restricts the flow of goods and services. This blockade affects civilian life profoundly, 
Statistics often show that Palestinian casualties, both military and civilian, have been significantly higher than Israeli ones. This disparity is frequently cited in international discussions and the conflict and contributes to calls for a ceasefire. This conflict, marked by its complexity and enduring nature, is once again at the forefront of global attention. The international community has reacted with a mix of condemnation and support, sparking protests, diplomatic talks, and calls for peace from around the world. Yet, amidst these calls, the path to peace remains elusive. These calls for ceasefire aim to halt hostilities and address urgent humanitarian needs, but often become conflated with broader political issues like territory disputes and national identity. Rabbi Weiss's unique position at the intersection of faith and activism offers us invaluable insights into the conflict's moral and ethical dimensions. Her perspective is especially poignant, considering the recent escalations. We aim to uncover not just the layers of this conflict, but also explore potential pathways toward reconciliation and peace. This is Between Crossroads.